Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Am I audible? आपको आवाज आ रही है मेरी जी सुंदर साहब को आवाज आ रही है मेरी बेटा यस सर आपकी आवाज बहुत क्लियर है अभी गो अहेड थैंक यू सो वी आर स्टार्टिंग विद द न्यू टॉपिक टुडे दैट इज द इंस्ट्रक्शंस टू योर कंप्लीट डेंचर पेशेंट्स आफ्टर द इन सेशन ऑफ योर कंप्लीट डेंचर दैट इज योर डिलीवरी अपॉइंटमेंट फॉर योर कंप्लीट डेंचर्स and this is uh, a responsibility of a dentist that uh, he should share certain things uh, how to use this prosthesis and what are the different problems you may face uh, after the insertion of this complete dentures why this is important because uh, forewarning always be you know uh, helpful for a dentist if you give these these uh, information after the insertion of your complete dentures patient always consider that this these are the explanation for the certain problems in my in my dentures there for example you always uh, tell your patient that initially you might have uh, excessive salivation in your mouth you would find some extra bul bulkiness in your mouth and it's very difficult to control the dentures initially you might have certain traumatic lesions in your mouth in your mouth but we are there we will help you out and initially even you have some problems while you, you try to speak certain words there so these these four warnings are very very important to your patients when your patient goes uh, to home and started to use that uh, prosthesis and if he or she will find these problems this would be in patient's mind that ke ha ye to doctor sahab ne mujhe bataya tha ke thoop bahut zyada aayegi baat karne mein masla hoga so that would take taken by your patient as a positive uh, thing otherwise uh, that would generate certain negative energy in your patient's mouth and next time when your patient will come maine to ye nikal ke rakh diya tha maine to pehna hi nahi ये तो बिल्कुल लूज है पेशेंट मेरे मुंह में ये तो बहुत थूक आती है बात भी नहीं की जाती तो दीज ऑल थिंग्स विल बी देयर सो इफ यू एट दैट स्टेज यू ट्राई टू एक्सप्लेन दीज थिंग्स योर पेशेंट वुड टेक अप दीज थिंग्स एज एक्सप्लेनेशन सो कीप इन इन योर माइंड दैट ऑलवेज वाइल यू आर डूइंग द इंसर्शन ऑफ योर कंप्लीट एंचर गिव गिव दीज इंफॉर्मेशन टू योर पेशेंट्स so we will discuss today in detail the, the certain other things that you have to explain to your patient that every patient is as an individual is different from other patient sometimes your patient might share the experience of some other patient in in the family or some friend or some relative like that ke uska to koi masla nahi hua tha mujhe itna masla ho raha hai mujhe to ye chub raha hai aur ye problem ho rahi hai aur wo problem ho rahi hai so आप उसको ये समझाएं कि पांचों उंगलियां बराबर नहीं होती एंड दैट पेशेंट वाज कंपैरेटिवली डिफरेंट फ्रॉम यू एज अ ह्यूमन बीइंग यू आर अ डिफरेंट इंडिविजुअल योर कैपेसिटी टू बेयर द थिंग्स इज डिफरेंट योर बोन इज डिफरेंट योर टिश्यूज आर डिफरेंट एवरीथिंग इज डिफरेंट फ्रॉम द अदर पेशेंट देयर एंड सेकंड थिंग इज द एज दैट इज वेरी वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट देयर सर्टेन स्टडीज हैव बीन डन दैट इज called osa oral stereognostic ability that is the ability of patient to recognize different shapes in patient's mouth aap star shape ka ek chhota sa plastic ka jo hai wo keh le ke component dal de patient ke muh mein and you ask you close the eye of your patient and you try to ask from your patient that what is this shape 
and with the help of your tongue and the, the other sensory organs in patient's mouth try to recognize that particular shape. So that explains that that oral stereognostic ability of your patient explains that okay, the age, as the age progresses, your capacity to bear the things would be reduced. Jitana buddha patient hoga, itni adaptability slow hogi, itni late hogi. Yeh ke nahi hogi. It would be there, but it would be more slower than the younger individuals. And one more thing you should keep in your mind, any, any error in your prosthesis might be recognized earlier by your younger age group as compared to your older age group. In older age groups, your responsibility comparatively would be more. Why? Because your patient will not be able to explain the complaint uh, properly. So you have to use your knowledge, your experience to make the judgment regarding the problem of your patient there. So this is the, the, the important point. Then um, explain your patient that initially, since you, you are edentulous for a longer period of time, so your, your muscles, facial expression muscles, uh, got adopted to that situation. And now, since we are changing the situation of your mouth, we are trying to give you the teeth and the denture base there. So your muscles would take some time to, to adopt a new position uh, and that tension, whatever the, the tension adopted by your muscles would be uh, slowly and gradually would be adopted to a new position. So be confident, be relaxed. It would take some time. It would take one or two days uh, that you would have a normal appearance of your, your you know, facial features there. So initially you may have a bulkiness in your patient. As you insert the denture, you would find that the labial fullness is far greater as it has to be there. The facial features, your nasal label groove, the, uh, the, uh, the pout area, the, the other features, the wrinkle on, on your face would be disappeared initially. So as the time passes, uh, the patient's uh, muscles get adopted to that new position there. So finally, you would have a different Parents all together. So initially, you will not be able to do that. You will not be able to do that. You will not be able to do that. So, you will not be able to do that. You will not be able to do that. You just leave that thesis in patient's mouth for one or two days. Uh, ideally, we, you, we have to call the patient after 24 hours to, to see different uh, problems in patient's mouth. Yeah, problems, you will never feel this problem in patients where your patient is transiting from your partially edentulous state to your completely edentulous state. Jahan patient ko pehle hi prosthesis lagi hui thi aur wo pain raha tha, pehle halke halke karke daant nikle hai uske, to wahan ye transition is very smooth, very smooth. Patient is not be able to judge any, any, uh, any difference if you are able to duplicate the things in patient's mouth. Then you have... Uh, Mastication with new dentures, you always uh, discourage your patient to open wide while eating uh, with the prosthesis initially. Otherwise, your dentures drop down. So, you have pre explanation that you have to do wide opening. Then, try to cut down your food in a smaller pieces. This or usko incision se kehna hai ke do not uh, incise with your anterior teeth. Incision nahi karni, always cut down the food in smaller pieces and take it with the premolars, center part of your denture. Usko batayin, beech se denture ka jo beech wala hissa hai, wahan se chabana hai, koshish karke dono taraf khana hai, ek taraf nahi khana hai. Start to eat bilaterally on your premolars. Avoid uh, sticky food. Chocolates, chewing gums, this type of cheese, so always because this is the limitation of your prosthesis. Ek to both wide opening or sticky food. Ye dono aapki permanent limitations hai of your complete dentures there. Ye cheese hai patient kabhi bisari zindagi usko aapne mana karna hai ki ye kaam nahi karna aapne. This wide opening might be tolerated later on when your patient would have a good control of your prosthesis. Like in sticky food, to jab bhi aaj das saal baad bhi ho khayega to your dentures going to dislodge from your supporting area.
then speaking with the new prosthesis, as I told you initially, you would have a temporary distortion of your um, sound articulations there. Different words, your patient won't be able to, you know, pronounce uh, in a proper way there. So this distortion is temporary. Why? Because you have a, initially you would have only teeth there. Now you have a denture base, you have a new position. Sometimes you have a slight, you know, uh, difference in your position of your teeth. So your tongue used to get adopted to this new situation there. So usko thoda sa time lagta hai. Might be two weeks, might be one month for different patients there. But if this distortion is permanent, that is going to be alarming for you. It might be because of the uh, improper positioning of your teeth or might be improper bulkiness of your denture base, especially in your premolar, maxillary premolar area. Agar waha aapne bulkiness zada kar diya denture base ki, aapka curve jo tha, wo simulate nahi kar with the palatal shape, so you might have a uh, permanent distortion of your certain palatal sounds where your tongue used to make contact with your palate, like K sound. So this, these sounds, the particular sounds, you might have uh, difficulty uh, in pronunciation there. So you always try to uh, kick back and try to use your knowledge of your, you know, uh, how this this is possible and how you can rectify this problem. So you can improve kar sakte hain, so not a big deal. Position ko bhi change kar sakte hain, thickness ko bhi thoda sa improve kar sakte hain. Uh, Lekin usse pehle aapki diagnosis is very, very important. So ek phonetics ka topic hai, mere khalsa Rizwan sahab wo cover karte hain. Agar unho ne cover kiya ho, to you have different sounds, usme vowels hai, phir uh, different, humare liye jo important hai, consonant and vowels nahi hai, humare liye important hai, we have certain lingual sounds, we have lingual dental sound, we have labial sounds, like M sound we use in your vertical dimension, that is your labial sound. Agar aap T ya S bolte hain, S is your lingual dental sound. So like that, you have different sounds there. So you try to make a judgment which sound is distorted, which type of sound is distorted. That means that is the area where you have a problem. So you identify the problem and try to improve that particular problem. Then care for your denture. Uh, three different things. Uh, always uh, advise your patient that जब आपने डेंचर को प्रोसेस किया उसके बाद उसे पानी में रखने की जरूरत नहीं है उस वक्त जरूरत नहीं है बट व्हेन योर पेशेंट स्टार्टेड टू यूज योर प्रोस्थेसिस एंड दैट इज द वेट एनवायरनमेंट एट और 10 10 आवर्स डेली और 12 आवर्स डेली वुड बी इन अ इन अ वेट एनवायरनमेंट देयर सो यू नेवर एडवाइज योर पेशेंट दैट व्हेनएवर यू रिमूव द डेंचर ड्यूरिंग नाइट टाइम Always keep it in your tape water there. Jo aapka mausam ka paani hai, whatever the weather is there. A uh, tape water you will use or a clean water, a normal temperature water, whatever the temperature of your environment is there, you just keep your denture in that particular water during the night. Why? Because you don't want cyclic uh, drying and wetting of your prosthesis. That might lead to some dimensional change in your prosthesis that is called warpage. Warpage. W-A-R-P-A-G-E. Warpage. Warpage is always because of your variation in your temperature. Variation in your temperature. That is if it is outside of your mouth. Agar wo patient ke mouth mein hai already with, supported with the uh, environment there, agar aap garam chai ya pani pee rahe, it doesn't make any difference. But if it is out of the mouth and you would put down your prosthesis in a hot water there, it might lead to some warpage, might lead to some change in your temperature. Second thing is you have uh, withdrawn your prosthesis from your uh, uh, flask or aap uski polishing kar rahe, kala color ka brush lagaya hua hai apne machine ke upar and you are giving the force there. And that force might lead to some heat generation there, especially mid palatal area. Ke upar, jab aap wo zyada zor dete hai usko, so that might lead to some warpage. So initially, you say that it was a retention thi jab maine iska impression liya, final processing ki, sab kuch kiya, sab theek tha. Ab jab denture process kiya hai, so it has uh, a, you know lack of retention there. So that might be because of your warpage. You are not controlling the temperature properly. So you have to respect your prosthesis. Why? Because this is acrylic. This is not your metal. Its the temperature uh, bearance is totally different from your metal uh, denture base. So be careful about the warpage there. Then prevention of your fractures. Uh, you always advise your patient whenever you are cleaning your prosthesis, 
try to keep it over your basin and fill up the basin with the water. Stoppers come in basins, you don't come in the old days, there was a black color stopper that came in, you put the water in the water, or otherwise take some, you know, take a bottle, take a bottle, take a bottle, take a bottle, fill the pot with the water and clean over that pot. If your denture drops, it drops in your water there. Why? Because this is this is expensive thing. Dentures uh, in government are cheaper, but in private practices, it's expensive for your patient. So that's why it, it, the, the sometimes it's not possible even to you know rejoin your fracture parts there. It is possible, but sometimes you, it might be the fracture might be so complicated that when you you know make them join, that might not be able to give you the same results might have some poor retention or some problems there so you might lead some uh, might lead to some extra process there and that needs some extra energy some extra money there some extra time avoid hot water as i told you never advise your patient to use hot water sirka or anything like that the chemicals there vinegar jisko kehte hain then your tissue health maintenance, you always advise, never tell on a first day that you keep that denture in your mouth during night. Once you give them a leeway that you can use this prosthesis during night, you might force your patient to have future problems there. Those problems are aggressive bone resorption because of the night parafunctional activities there. You might have uh, you know, dentist stomatitis, the, the leading cause of your dental stomatitis is night wearing. Why? Because already, if you even you are removing the prosthesis during night, there are 60 per 60 to 80 percent prevalence of your dental stomatitis in patients' mouth. Why? Because of your acrylic. The acrylic is the harboring area for your microorganisms. So if you are advising your patient to use that prosthesis during night where you have a, a decreased salivary flow, so your patient might have aggressive stomatitis there and it would develop very earlier stages of your prosthesis wearing. So you never advise the night wearing. Yes, if your patient is having some problems, went to some gas, uh, went to some you know other home there, not be able to remove it, yes, then you can wear it. Otherwise, uh, you have to remove it and keep it in your uh, normal tape water there. Stimulate the tissue keratinization. Why? Because your tissues are not made to bear the loads. The teeth were equipped with the periodontal tissues, the periodontium there. That periodontium is basically made to bear the loads, having shock absorbing capacity, having some sensory organs there. But once you pull out the teeth, after that, you do not have that, uh, you know, facility there. So your top, soft tissues might be keratinized, might be non-keratinized, having some differences there, but are not made to bear the occlusal loads there. So you have to force them, your tissues, have the adoptability capacity there. So when you give the denture to your patients, because of this excessive force transmission, your non-keratinized tissues would be changed to your parakeratinized tissues. And those parakeratinized tissues are able to uh, bear the forces there. So you can, even you can stimulate the tissues by massaging the tissues to, to convert into the parafunctional, this, uh, the parakeratin form there. So your, your, your epithelium start to make this parakeratin uh, earlier. If you advise your patient to brush the tissues area, the, especially the denture bearing area or massage with the fingers there. So that would help, that would be helpful to, uh, you know, uh, for the earlier adaptation of your prosthesis there. Then brush the tongue, we always advise even for your dental patients there. Why? Because you have certain, you know, food particles lodges into the depressions in your tongue there. Then denture hygiene, how the patient will keep uh, his or her denture keep and clean. There are certain methods, uh, but most advisable method is your manual cleansing. 
uh, advise your patient to take the brush, soft brush, toothbrush, and use a mild detergent. Mild detergent kya hota? Wo sabun jisse aap mood ho saken. It's a mild detergent. Jisse kapde dhoye jaate hain. The the soap which we used to use for your clothes, we never advise that. Why? Because it has got uh, you know um, the the detergent is you know is more uh, acidic. So we need more alkaline sort of a thing there. So we always advise uh, the face cleansing uh, soaps to your patient. Take the brush, rub over the, the, the soap and may clean the denture with the help of that detergent there. Never brush the, the uh, tissue surface aggressively. Yes, uh, with the mild hand, with the gentle hand, you can clean it up and brush it brush always over the basin as i told you never use toothpaste or any abrasive uh, you know face there never advise your patient to use uh, toothpaste why because toothpaste used to have dentifrices having certain minor uh, particles of your uh, salica there so that might uh, create uh, you know the looseness of your polish would be earlier and once the polish is loose, your micro microorganism have got the opportunity to, uh, you know, to lodge there and produce certain problems. Then you have the other category is your chemical cleansing. Uh, you would advise that your patient can use the sodium hypochlorite. This for household bleach, getting one percent, or gluter haldeide two percent. Dono may say koi ek cheese wo use kar sakte hain. Ye home bleach to baut easily available hoti hai. Lekin one percent se zada nahi honi chahiye. Uski dilution one percent honi chahiye. Agar wo zada hogi, that might lead to some chemical damage to your your dentures there. So you can keep it for fifteen minutes or in voucher it is advised that keep it for overnight there. So agar aap voucher ko follow karte hain, purani books mein fifteen minutes likha hua hai, lekin voucher kehti hai overnight aap rakhein usko. So Denture should be clean before soaping it into your solution. Aajkal kuch tablets bhi available hain. Aur wo tablets basically yehi hypochlorite hi hoti hai basically. Ya aapki glutaraldehyde ki hoti hai. Wo aapko uski composition de sakte hain. Ek tablet aap paani mein dal dein and keep it for your overnight there, the denture. So that would reduce the, the uh, microorganisms count over your prosthesis. Sometimes ये एडवाइस करते हैं कि 15 मिनट्स के लिए आप इसको सन बात भी दे सकते हैं डेंचर को सिर्फ ये पुरानी किताबों के अंदर लिखा हुआ है अदरवाइज इफ यू आर यूजिंग दिस टैबलेट दिस डेंचर क्लीनिंग टैबलेट्स आर अवेलेबल इन द मार्केट रेड सॉरी ग्रीन एप्पल के नाम से वो यूज कर ले पेशेंट इट्स मोर देन इनफ डोंट नीड एनीथिंग मोर देन यू हैव सोनिक क्लींजर्स वो कुछ भी नहीं होता एक इस तरीके से कह लें कि एक बीकर सा होता है हैविंग सम अल्ट्रासोनिक मशीन देयर Produce some vibration in that pouch, pouch uh, area of that uh, you know instrument there. Normally, laboratories ke under hota hai, homes ke under advice karna is quite difficult. Because its cost is more. The patient will not be you know um, use that particular thing. But you must keep it in your uh, clinics as well. If you are a prosthodontist, as a prosthodontist, we used to keep it. Why? Because sometimes patient would come with the calculus, some cigarette stains, some other uh, you know deposits over your prosthesis. So what you used to do? Usme to one percent hypochlorite dalke us beaker ke under and just turn down the the button on. ठीक है. Ultimately, after 15 minutes, 10 to 15 minutes, because of your vibratory energy, these calculus stains or other things would be dislodged from your prosthesis. Very effective, very effective uh, method to remove the, the stains and your, you know, calculus from your prosthesis there. So this is about uh, the, the, the instructions to your patient. So we have uh, a second topic as well. Uh, I would just start that particular topic. So we have um, my two lectures went away uh, directly because of some problems. एक जुमे को बारिश हो गई दूसरे को घर से आशुरा था इस वजह से. So uh, 
आई विल डिस्कस विद यू दी डेंटल इम्प्लांट्स उसमें कुछ मोटी मोटी चीजें हम डिस्कस करेंगे नॉट एज वी यूज टू डिस्कस विद दी स्टूडेंट ऑफ योर एट सेमेस्टर उसमें टॉपिक डिवाइडेड थे यहाँ थोड़े लेक्चर्स कम है आपके लिहाजा इसमें आई विल डिस्कस दी इम्पॉर्टेंट थिंग्स फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल वट इज डेंटल इम्प्लांट इट्स अ फिक्सर इट्स अ टाइटेनियम फिक्सचर विच इज प्लेज इन योर जॉब basically it was previous prior to your dental uh, use it was used in your orth orthopedic practices pi brenamart naam ka banda hai jisne ye modern jo dental implants hain jiska shape yahan nazar aa raha hai aapko tasveer mein this was for the first time used by pi brenamart and uh, he copied uh, the shape of your root there so ye jo implant hai ye modern implants ye pi brenamart ne diye और ये कोई ज्यादा अरसा नहीं हुआ इट वॉज इंट्रोड्यूस वे बैक इन यूर नाइनटीन प्लेस उसने 64 या 65 में किया था और उसके बाद प्रेजेंट जो किया था कॉन्फ्रेंस में वो 78 में किया था सो दीज इम्प्लांट्स आर प्लेस सर्जिकली इनटू योर जॉब बोन एंड दैट दैट फिक्सचर बेसिकली इज गिवन देयर टू रिप्लेस योर मिसिंग टूथ this is specialized uh, dental implant that is the implant particularly used for your dental practices so you can define this fixture as that this is a titanium fixture might be a pure titanium might be an alloy of your titanium might be might be some other form of your dental uh, implant materials usme hum zirconia bhi use kar sakte hain yani glasses bhi use hote hain aapke सरामिक्स जिसको कहते हैं वो भी आजकल यूज हो रहे हैं सो एनी बायो कंपैटेबल मटेरियल बायो कंपैटेबिलिटी को हम डिस्कस करेंगे कि वो क्या है इस बायो कंपैटेबिलिटी ये नेक्स्ट डेफिनेशन अगर आप देखें इस पर मिकोसल डिवाइस मींस द डिवाइस व्हिच इज गोइंग थ्रू योर म्यूकोसा इनटू योर बोन एंड व्हिच इज बायो कंपैटेबल यानी जो आप मटेरियल यूज कर रहे हैं वो मटेरियल या जो फिक्सचर है वो बायो कंपैटेबल होना चाहिए एंड बायो फंक्शनल होना चाहिए बायो कंपैटेबिलिटी मींस whatever the the material you have used should not create any problem to your tissues there and should be kept there for a time whatever the the service time is there 5 years 10 year 20 years should not deteriorate the the tissues there should be As humble as your own tissues there. That is your biocompatibility. ये मुख्तलिफ तरीके से आप इसको explain कर सकते हैं. So this biocompatibility is depending. क्यों? क्योंकि why? Because whenever you use some material there, it may have some byproducts. जैसे कि हम corrosion कहते हैं. जब आप metal use करते हैं, alloys use करते हैं, तो आपके पास byproducts बनते हैं in the form of uh, the sulfides, the oxides there. और वो बाय प्रोडक्ट्स क्या है बेसिकली सपोज यूर मेटल इज नॉट टॉक्सिक टू योर टिश्यूज बट द बाय प्रोडक्ट्स आर टॉक्सिक फॉर योर टिश्यूज लाइक प्रोसेस प्रोडक्ट्स सो वो जो प्रोडक्ट्स हैं वो भी आपके इस तरीके के होने चाहिए विच डू नॉट क्रिएट एनी प्रॉब्लम टू योर टिश्यूज देर वाई बिकॉज इफ यू हैव रिएक्शनरी चेंजेस इन रिएक्शन टू योर मटीरियल देयर might lead to failure of your prosthesis there might damage the tissues might produce some uh, reactionary changes changes mainly to some cancer there so biocompatibility depending on not only the material itself but its by products there and second thing is a core cheez hoti hai biocompatibility mein wo ye hoti hai ki if uh, suppose your material is biocompatible suppose you are using titanium that is biocompatible this would produce Uh, a layer oxide layer that oxide layer is more permissive to your bone formation jitna titanium acha nahi hai usse zyada uski oxide layer jo titanium oxide layer banti hai uske upar wo zyada uh, tissue compatible hai zyada bio compatible hai even bioactive hai usko kehte hain bioactive why because that layer would force your tissues to make the bone there so we need bone formation so that is bioactive layer so wo biocompatible ke sath sath bioactive bhi hai lekin sometimes when you touch this titanium with some other metal like aapne aapne 
उसके साथ कोई मेटल की कोई और इंस्ट्रूमेंट टच कर दी जैसे हम स्टेनलेस स्टील के इंस्ट्रूमेंट्स यूज करते हैं आपने वो टच कर दिया उसके टच करने से क्या होगा यू हैव अरल इन्वायरमेंट देयर सपोज दिस इज योर इम्प्लांट इस पे आपने जाके यहाँ डेंटल मिरर टच किया तो यहाँ ऑलरेडी सिलाईवा है आपके पास एक सेल बना हुआ है तो कैटाइन एन एनाइन कैथोड और एनोड्स बन जाएंगे और जो मेटल के ऊपर जो आपके कैटाइंस थे वो एनाइंस के ऊपर जाके डिपॉजिट हो जाएंगे ये एक आपका इलेक्ट्रोलिटिक सेल बन जाएगा यहाँ पर सो so, वो जो बायो प्रोडक्ट्स बनाएंगे यहाँ पर कौन से स्टेनलेस स्टील के वो बायो कंपेटेबल नहीं होंगे तो आप यू नेवर टच योर डेंटल इम्प्लांट सम अदर मेटल या तो आप उसको प्लास्टिक से टच करें या फिर टाइटेनियम से ही टच करें टाइटेनियम के इंस्ट्रूमेंट यूज कर सकते हैं आप यू कैन नॉट यूज सम अदर मेटल ओवर योर टाइटेनियम सो दैट माइट लीड टू सम फेलियर इन योर बायो कंपेटेबिलिटी तो बायो कंपेटेबिलिटी मीन्स एनी मिटीरियल गिविंग यू दर्विसेज इन योर टिश्यूज विदाउट डिटेरिएटिंग द टिश्यूज that is called biocompatibility so a permucosal device which is biocompatible and biofunction agar aapne is biocompatible material ko yahan dala hai lekin iske upar occlusal load bhi aane so iski strength jo hai itni honi chahiye it must be that strong that it must bear the occlusal loads as well that is why we are not using commercially pure titanium that is 99.9% titanium initially we made the implants with the commercially pure titanium then later on we change that implant with the alloy alloy of titanium titanium is added with the molybdenum uh, and some other precious metal so then they they observe that the the bio compatibility of your pure com commercially pure titanium and titanium alloys are the same there is no difference so that's why nowadays we are using the titanium alloys we are not using commercially pure, pure titanium that has reduced the cost of your dental implants pehle 5 lakh ka implant tha ab misal hai ke aap bahut acche implant bhi use kare to 30 35000 ki range mein maximum 50000 mein mil jata hai aapko bahut acche implant use kare aur agar cheaper implant use kare to 15 16000 mein mil jata hai so you have reduced this 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 act has reduced the cost of your dental implant cell so this must be biocompatible biofunctional and is placed within the mucosa or within the bone associated with the oral cavity to provide support for your fixed or removable prosthesis so this is the uh, more ex uh, deeper explanation of your dental implants we have different types of your dental implants अब बहुत ज्यादा अभी अगर इसको एक्सप्लेन करें तो वी हैव फाइव टाइप्स अदरवाइज नॉर्मली लोग इसको चार डिफरेंट टाइप्स या तीन डिफरेंट टाइप्स को ज्यादा एक्सप्लेन करते हैं सो यू हैव फाइव डिफरेंट टाइप्स ऑफ योर डेंटल इम्प्लांट म्यूकोजल इंसर्ट दिस इज फ्रॉम योर हिस्टोरिकल पॉइंट ऑफ व्यू से मैंने लगा दिया कि हिस्ट्री में ये भी चीजें यूज हुई हैं देन यू हैव एंडोडोंटिक इम्प्लांट स्टेबलाइजर ये भी हिस्ट्री में यूज होते रहे सब पेरियोस्टल इम्प्लांट्स ये कोई ज्यादा अर्सा नहीं हुआ सौ साल पहले ही यूज होते थे एंडोस्टियल और एंडोसियस जो कि हम आज यूज कर रहे हैं उसकी एक फॉर्म दैट इज योर रूट फॉर्म इम्प्लांट्स उसमें और दो किस्में भी हैं आपकी प्लेट फॉर्म इम्प्लांट्स एंड रेमस फ्रेम इम्प्लांट्स वो अभी हम डिस्कस करते हैं वो क्या है देन यू हैव ट्रांसोसियस इम्प्लांट्स जो कि वेरी अग्रेसिव इम्प्लांट्स वी आर नॉट यूजिंग नाउ डेज वी आर यूजिंग दिस एंडोस्टियल और एंडोसियस इम्प्लांट्स म्यूकोसल इंसर्ट्स यहाँ थोड़ी सी एक तस्वीर देख लें दीज दीज इम्प्लांट्स यूज टू बी एंकर्ड इन योर यू नो सब म्यूकोजा देव बल्कि एपिथेलियम जहाँ सब म्यूकोजा के साथ मिलती है उस लेवल के ऊपर इनको रखा जाता था एंड वी यूज टू कीप दी प्रोसेस ओवर दीज इम्प्लांट्स नाउ डेज वी आर नॉट यूजिंग दिस इज फ्रॉम हिस्टोरिकल पॉइंट ऑफ व्यू इसका कोई यहाँ पर कोई एग्जिस्टेंस नहीं है देन यू हैव एंडोडोंटिंग स्टेबलाइजर एक टर्म हम यूज करते हैं क्राउन टू रूट रेशो जो आपको फिक्स में आपने रिजवान साहब ने भी पढ़ाई होगी वे आर यू हैव अ शॉर्ट क्लिनिकल सॉरी द रूट हाइट देर because of your bone resorption is lesser than your coronal height ya crown ki height se aapki root ki height kam ho gayi hai so you do not have a ideal crown to root ratio that's why you cannot fix the prosthesis over your particular abutment there is tooth ko aap abutment kehte hain so what you used to the, what they used to do in the past ye ek endodontic stabilizer ko they used to pass through the root of your tooth 
and they used to engage the bone in a peripical area. But for that, the, the one of the criteria is very, very important. That is, you must have bone over your peripical area. Suppose, if you focus on the sweep of the sweep, this is your maxillary sinus. If you have a dent here, you cannot use these endodontic stabilizers. You can use these in premolar area, mein, scissor area, mein, in areas where you can use it. In molar area, mein, aapka sinus used to be very near to your roots there. So you cannot use this particular type of implants. Nowadays, we are not using this implant. This is the history right now. But people used to use this implant when these modern implants were not there. This is your subperiosteal implant. Give the incision, raise the flap, expose the bone, and use this frame over that periosteum. That's why this is called subperiosteal implants. Means it is placed over your exposed bone of your mandible. This is particularly used for your mandible, not used for your maxilla. Nowadays we are not using because this, this implant is very aggressive uh, and has got certain problem prosthesis. May have to pass inter uh, allular distance. Yeah, this go up inter arch distance. Get them was on a chair. This option is other OTT to up use car sector. This option come out here. Well developed ridges may to up your framework. Rakhains ke whooper per up denture. But I get fixed prosthesis. You might not get that much of your space there. So aggressive resorption and like this case you can use this particular type of implants there then you have endosteal implants this called endosteal implant you get why because the the terminal end of this implant used to be into your bone yeah this implant used to end up in your bone end up in your bone it never crosses the bone all the way उससे अगला जो टाइप हम करेंगे उसमें नीचे से इंप्लांट जाएगा बोन के ऊपर से निकल जाएगा सो मैंडिबल में फ्रॉम द द लोअर बॉर्डर ऑफ योर यू यूज्ड टू प्लेस द इंप्लांट फ्रॉम योर लोअर बॉर्डर एंड यूज्ड टू पास इट थ्रू योर इट यूज्ड टू अपीयर इन योर ओरल कैविटी वो जो आपको ट्रांस ओसियस इंप्लांट ये एंडोस्टियल इंप्लांट या एंडोसियस इंप्लांट्स आर दोस इंप्लांट्स व्हिच एंड अप इन योर बोन इसमें तीन डिफरेंट टाइप्स हैं वन इज योर प्लेट फॉर्म इंप्लांट प्लेट फॉर्म या ब्लेड फॉर्म इसकी शेप से पता चल रहा है कि ये एक थिन सी प्लेट है व्हिच इज यूज टू बी प्लेस इनटू योर बोन जैसे कि यहां दिखाया हुआ है इसको आपने बोन में डाल दिया दिस एक्सटेंशन यूज्ड टू लाइ इनटू योर ओरल कैविटी एंड यू जस्ट प्लेस द क्राउन और ब्रिज और व्हाटएवर द प्रोस्थेसिस यू लाइक टू गिव ओवर दिस एक्सटेंशन देयर दिस इज दिस इज द अबडमेंट एरिया ऑफ योर इंप्लांट देयर बट दिस अबडमेंट इज नॉट द मॉडर्न अबडमेंट यूज्ड टू बी प्लेस्ड लेटर ऑन in a fixture there. Yeah, but yeah, it is the part of this fixture. There. So it's clear if you do not have that much of thickness of your bone, you can place it. Thin bone can there be any palato lingually ya lingo buckley jogger I a lingo facially bone up a tenor to you can use this implant. And that implant was used before the time when we were not that much aware of your bone augmentation procedures. Nowadays we are very much aware of your Bone augmentation procedure, up, you can increase the width of your, your bone. Bone splitting, you can split the bone, you can increase the width of your bone. You have different sizes of your implants, up to up your past three, three millimeter width ke implants, bhi aage. Isse bhi niche ke, 2.8 ke bhi hai, kuch companies. Mein. So you can use the narrow implants, you can uh, split up the bone, you can increase the width of your bone, you can use the Alloplastic materials in patients' mouth. You can use the membranes, resorbable membranes, non-resorbable membranes to increase the worth of your bone. There. So nowadays we are not using this implant, this particular. The ramus frame implants. वो कैसा होता है? वो इस तरीके से होता है. This would be anchored into your endosseous है ना तो ये bone के अंदर anchor होना है. Three different areas. One is your symphysial area. यहाँ पर आप इसको deeply embedded करेंगे into your bone and the third molar area. Posteriorly, okay. In those areas, can there it it is embedded in your bone. That's why this is included in your endosseous category there. So, and this is a this is a framework, a complete framework, simple single unit framework there having three extension. How does it extension? I will show you. This way, it has got the extension. This is embedded in your bone. This is endosseous implant. This 
straight portion would go into your ramus there, posterior. That's why this is called ramus frame implants there. Ye kaha indicated hote hai, where you have a severe resorption of your bone. Why? Because this only engages the area, symphysal area, jahan par aapke niche nerve nahi hoti. Niche aapka inferior angular canal nahi hai, so you can deeply embed this portion there. Or ramus ke andar where you do not have, uh, uh, you know, uh, nearest uh, existence of your nerve there. So, ye bhi aaj kal use nahi hote. From the past, we have took up this pictures to show you that how we used to use these implants. This is the, the picture of while they are doing the surgery. They can isko yaha in symphysial area mein rakh diya gaya hai aur yaha par bhi isko embed kiya gaya into your bone. See here and this over this you used to place whatever you want to place a complete denture usually be made over this. So this would give support to your prosthesis. Why? Because you have a pencil thin mandible there. So this would uh, you know, this would pose some problems to a prostodontist of stability, retention, and other issues there. Uh, you can use segmental as well. Symphysial implants for segmental be used kiya ja sakta hai in segments there. So this is the modification of your uh, remus frame implant. Nowadays we are using this root form implants. This called endosseous implant. Ab aapke zain mein koi bolta na endosseous implant to foreign zain mein aata hai ki ye root form implants ki baat ho rahi hai. Because we 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 uh, all the other implants are now the history. Whatever now in modern days we are using is this implant. See this implant. Yahan par agar aap dekhen, to ye ye photograph ke upar constant. This is your root form implant. Jab ye mature ho jayega. Uh, four to six months mein iske upar aap ye abutment laga denge with the help of your screw aur phir iske upar ye crown lag jayega is tarike se. So this is the modern form of your implant. Iski beauty kya hai? You can replace the single tooth, you can replace the 14 teeth there. Yani pure ke pure jaw ko bhi replace kar sakte hain, single tooth ko bhi replace kar sakte hain. Six to seven implants kare hain, pure 14 teeth aap iske upar la. 14 nahi to 12 teeth to bade maze ke saath aap uske upar. Normally we used to use uh, uh, whenever your patient is completely dentulous, we never uh, replace the second molar. Up to first molar, we used to finish it up. This is a shortened dental arch concept, SDA. This concept was given uh, way back in 1984 by Kesar. Kesar naam ka banda hai, He suggested that if you have uh, a first molar area, means you have first molar there, even you have up to your premolars. If you have two premolars and patient having no functional uh, complaints there, having good functional ability to chew the food, no need to replace your molars there. So we follow this concept, we follow a little bit, we extend it to the first molar. So our functional capacity is restored to the patient. Ki. So you do not need second and third molars there. So this modern implant, as I told you, given by P.I. Brenamark, uh, was an orthopedician. Tha. Wo dentist nahi tha, orthopedician tha, usne ka, why if I am using these screws in, patient, in patients, uh, uh, you know, skeleton there in different areas, why not I can use this this uh, screw in patient's mouth as well. So he, he used this particular implant in patient's mouth in 1965 and presented in 1978 a conference with he, uh, dental implants ke upar wahan ke usne present kiya aur usne first time aake kaha ke eh, ye implants jo hote hain inke around bone banti hai that is called osseo integration uh, integration of your bone is there usse pehle ye concept nahi tha usse pehle before that uh, the researchers believed that ke uh, whenever you put down some some uh, material some alloplastic material or some uh, other uh, implants in patients jaw bone they used to have same architecture as you used to have for your teeth you used to have some membrane in between your bone your implant material and your so this concept was totally negated by pi brenamark pi brenamark said that no whenever you place the implant in patients jaw you have a direct structural and functional connection of your jawbone with the dental implant. No intervening membrane there. It's a direct structural connection of your dental implant with the jawbone. So that that changes the the 
uh, standard for care of your dental implantology. Now the modern dental implantology based on this concept. Here the research is start in different dimensions. But the base was this point, which was presented by Pierre Branamark in his uh, in one of the conference in UK there. This is the root form implants. There are different shapes. Pele, ye plain parallel wall implants banaye gaye. Lekin unhon ne dekha ki plain implants jo hain, in mein micro movements bahut zyada thi. Fir usko unhon ne threads laga diye. Threads se ye fayda hua ki unki initial stability would be better than this plain implants there. Fir uske upar unhon ne kuch surface coatings kar di in order to encourage the bone formation there. So that this uh, HA coating, hydroxy appetite coatings promote the bone formation. Osteoconduction karein maan par. ठीक है फिर इसके अलावा उन्होंने इसको माइक्रो सरफेसेस माइक्रो चैनल्स भी क्रिएट किए रफनेसेस क्रिएट की रफनेसेस का क्या फायदा हुआ इट इज ऑलवेज बी बेनिफिशियल टू इंक्रीज द सरफेस एरिया ऑफ योर डेंटल इंप्लांट्स इंक्रीज द बोन फॉर्मेशन देयर उसको एसएलए कोटिंग कहते हैं एसएलए इंप्लांट्स जो होते हैं मींस एसएलए इंप्लांट मींस वेयर वी हैव क्रिएटेड द माइक्रो चैनल्स विद द हेल्प ऑफ योर एसिड एचिंग देयर एसिड एच करते हैं उसको जिससे माइक्रो चैनल्स क्रिएट होते हैं दैट वुड प्रोमोट दी बोन फॉर्मेशन दियर सो दिस इज दिस इज दी डेंटल इम्प्लांट डिफरेंट डेंटल इम्प्लांट प्लेन देन यू हैव थ्रेडेड दिस थ्रेडेड इम्प्लांट नाउ डेज वी आर यूजिंग थ्रेडेड इम्प्लांट्स वी आर नॉट यूजिंग प्लेन इम्प्लांट्स देयर एज आई टोल्ड यू दिस प्लेन इम्प्लांट्स हैव सम माइक्रो मूवमेंट्स देयर एंड दैट वुड डिले दी बोन फॉर्मेशन देयर द फेलियर of your dental plain dental implants were were far greater than your today's implant today's implant have got more than 95% uh, prognosis the success rate of modern implants even uh, 98% in some books then you have transosseous implants as i told you these are the implant which passes uh, through and through from your mandible इस तरीके के ये इम्प्लांट हैं दिस पोर्शन इज इट इज यूजली प्लेस एक्स्ट्रा ओवरली नीचे से इंसिशन लगाते थे ओवर द बेस ऑफ योर सिम्फेसियल एरिया चिन के ऊपर यहाँ इंसिशन लगा के ये जो पोर्शन होता था ये चिन की बेस के ऊपर होता था और ये स्क्रू बोन के अंदर होते थे एंड दीज टू स्क्रू यूज टू पास थ्रो बोन इन टू योर ओरल कैविटी थ्रू एंड थ्रू इट्स वेरी अग्रेसिव इम्प्लांट पेशेंट नीड हॉस्पिटलाइजेशन for this particular implant need some follow up some need uh, need some aggressive surgery there so very dangerous implant very dangerous nowadays is its existence is not there, there. Uh, so this is about the different types of your dental implants inshallah next time we will discuss the the next topic that is your osseo integration so any question you want to ask you can ask me so is uh, i think you, you don't have any question inshallah next time we will continue the dental implants inshallah in next lecture so it's enough for today inshallah god bless you uh, meet you in us next lecture inshallah